Hey, hey, you guys. I hope all of you are doing great, keeping healthy and welcome back to my PhD life. First things first, I have to send buckets full of gratitude and love to all of you out there who have been sharing your love and support on the channel and making it possible for me to get 1000 subscribers. So thank you so much all of you who have been helping spread the word about my channel, liking my work. People who've been commenting that my work has been helping them to go through their tough times. It's really inspirational and motivational for me to hear back from you and it helps me keep going. So keep pouring in the love you guys. I know I have come back after a sort of a long break and as I said earlier and sort of posted in one of my recent posts on the channel that I have been unwell and it's been a tough patch for the last few months. The vaccination reactions and then I got injury in my knees and that's been pretty painful and I have not been walking my normal stance for almost two months now. So it's been stressful and then there's a lot been happening on the professional front and to balance your health with profession and keep going has been challenging so that has kept me away from coming and talking to you guys more frequently but now i'm back so let's get started one of the major concerns that students exploring the field of research wanting to do a phd or already doing a phd have is how long is it going to take for them to finish their phd and that's sort of a question that your families also have your friends also have and everyone sort of keeps pestering you for that and for anyone who's a non-PhD and watching this, this is one of the questions that PhD students don't like to be asked. So please don't bother them if you have this information now. One of the major and common concerns that most students who are considering the field of research, considering to do a PhD or already have gotten into a PhD have, is that how long is it going to take for them to finish the PhD? And it's a practical question, right? And a question that FYI, most PhD students hate to be asked. So if you have this information now and you're a parent or a relative or a friend, stay away from this question. Uh, <laughs> coming back to the point, uh, it's a practical and a natural question to have. And I think it's an important one because a lot of your life events depend on when you graduate. And a lot of responsibilities that life brings in also sometimes get mixed with the course of PhD and then it slows things down further. So it's important to keep a tab on how long your PhD journey is going to be. And there are many, many factors that you could take care of to ensure that whatever uh, goal you started off with, say when you joined your PhD program and you thought that, okay, I want to finish it in three years or four years or five years, what are the kind of things that you can do to ensure that you stick to that timeline? And that is what is going to be the theme for discussion today. So now an obvious question that you should ask me is, hey Navjot, uh, why should we listen to the suggestions that you are giving? What was the timeline for your own PhD? So to give you that stat, uh, I joined the Indian Institute of Science, IIC Bangalore in August 2016. I joined directly after my bachelor's, so I've not done a master's degree before I joined for the PhD. And I will graduate in July 2021. And to give you a further, a little in-depth view of how my PhD went, uh, I finished my comprehensive exam within the first two years and started my research work. I submitted my, th I gave my colloquium, something that we've talked about in other videos, which you can find the link on the description box. I gave my colloquium in Jan 2021. I submitted my thesis in February 2021. And it took roughly four months to hear back from the thesis reviewers and submit my response and have the relevant authorities approve the responses. And hence, even after submission of my thesis in February, at the end of February 2021, it took me until up, up until July 2021, end of July 2021, to finish my PhD. So even if you finish your job and submit the thesis and have done all your work, all these reviews and then uh, administrative processing take a lot of time. And after thesis submission, it took me five months to f sort of see the D-Day. There are different stages and different things which could extend the time of what you're doing. But what I've realized is that, okay, you have to keep a tab on time, but the more important fact is that you should enjoy the fact that you did a PhD, you should enjoy that journey, that experience, and try to come out as a better person, as a better researcher. Cool. So this video, I'm going to talk about my top six tips, you guys, not top three, not top five. You have a lot to go for top six tips and help you guys figure out how to plan or think about your PhD timelines better and in a holistic manner, not just a semester or a year, but how, are, how can you think about your PhD as a whole? 
so first tip one of the things that i religiously did and it sort of i believe that it helped me a lot 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 during my phd to be more productive is that i always planned my day in advance on days when i got free in the evening say by 6 or 7 i would write down what are the kind what are the tasks that i'm going to execute the next day what are the experiments that i'm going to do what is the data analysis that's pending if i had something on my reading list if i had any meetings all of it i sort of thought in advance at night on the day that was that I, when i was ending my work for that day that sort of helped me walk in the next day and start working and not sort of spend the first one or two hours of my day thinking what i'm going to do the rest of the day because then you think for an hour or two you think okay i worked for two hours let's take a break and then get started and in all of that you lose an important morning time of your day if you're a morning person or important starting time of the day whenever you start your day when you're very energetic so i preferred planning my day in advance either at the end of the previous day or quickly in the morning the next day as you start developing this practice your mind and your ability to think and plan also improves and it doesn't take you much time to write your plan for the next day as you keep on practicing this skill the second thing and again a very very important thing that i think helped me during my phd was that i analyzed the experimental data on the same day what that meant was that i would plan my experiment such that i get free by 6:37 ish and then i had a good one one and a half hour before dinner to analyze all the data that i had collected on that day why that helped me was because i would compile the data put them in slides and that would get me slides ready for a meeting with my professor or a group meeting presentation saved a lot of time on the day or on, in the week when i am supposed to present in the meeting it also helped me to compile data for writing reports for funding agencies writing my publications at the end writing my thesis because i have already analyzed everything put in slides i just had to take it and copy into the reports another important factor that played a role here was if you analyze the data on the same day your mind was actively focused on that task so you can identify the pitfalls or mistakes you might have done things that you want to do after you have analyzed those results because that's something fresh in your mind but if you let the results sit for 2 3 days or a week and then say that i'll collect data for a week and then come back then usually you tend to forget things that were fresh in your mind on that day i understand that many experimentalists or people who work with coding and simulations might have a part of their problem solving where they have to generate first a lot of data do subs, uh, do continuous runs and then be able to analyze them those are exceptions i am not saying everyone has to do this every day for all sort of work that they're doing but at least for things that i was doing it worked for me and helped me a lot to save time third tip very very important you guys if you're doing a phd research or any sort of uh, project or job which requires data analysis and data compilation and is generating a lot of data efficient record keeping your file names your folder names your details whatever help you identify where you have to go to search for a particular thing have to be impeccable otherwise at the end of your 4 5 years when you sit down to write a thesis your life is going to be a mess so i used to ensure that my record keeping is efficient at the way i categorize things helps me save time whenever i need to find something and i'm going to do a separate video on efficient record keeping soon so keep an eye out for that and once it's out do watch it if you struggle with finding data finding files finding references when you need it it's a very very important skill to develop fourth and another important one i think all these six tips are really important guys i can't just sort of even prioritize them because all of them are really important if you want to keep a tab on how your progress is in your phd have goal oriented meetings with your supervisor many a times i've seen what happens with students is that they have done bunch of experiments or simulations over two weeks they are going in a meeting with their supervisor go discuss the results have a general discussion and come out but there's no discussion about where is that project headed whatever results that you have gotten in that time what do they tell you to, about what's going to be the next phase is it real progress or you have been scrambling in waters trying to figure out what's going on so all of these discussions i'm not saying every meeting you have to ask okay where is this going when is the next publication no but in general if you're having two meetings a month you should get a general feel out of that meeting as to what are my goals with this work that i'm doing where is it headed and am i able to 
accomplish them. So have some parameters that help you assess whether you have been able to accomplish your goals or not. So have goal oriented meetings as much as possible. Fifth tip, another important one, have a reading hour. Now you could have a daily reading hour that's too strenuous and practically I couldn't execute it. So you, I, what I did was I would fix at least one day a week where say one half of my day is to be devoted to reading. And that's important because you need to know what's latest in your area. What's the new, what are the new things that have come up? Are you doing something which has already been done in the field or someone is parallelly doing? Because then it becomes competitive work and if they publish before you, they can go to a better journal and then you, your work would be repeated. So you have to go to either a lower one or you might not be able to publish it at all. So such kind of problems can be avoided if you have a reading hour and that will also help you develop better understanding of the field, widen your thinking process because you'll be reading about a lot of different things. So it's important to have a reading hour. And oh yes, it will also help you find references which you will badly need when you write your thesis. Now the last one guys, it's very 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 important to have some short term goals and have some long term goals and they keep evolving throughout the course of your PhD. So what I used to do is have say semester wise goals and then my yearly goals. Yearly goals are like big picture. Uh, say I'm working on three projects right now, then I would think of what would be their stage of completion by the end of this year. Uh, which out of these three would I completely finish and sort of uh, uh, proceed towards writing my publications or sort of compiling all the results and think about what I could do next and which would be an intermediate stage and require more time. So that sort of is a big picture view that you have to have. Semester wise or bi-monthly goals are very important and in those I used to think that in the next two months what is the amount of work that I'm going to accomplish and as it's an unknown territory that you'll venture into it might happen that you think that I'm gonna finish so much so of my experiments or so many simulations or I have to write a code to solve this problem it might or might not happen so you have to keep introspecting keep checking whether I'm going in the right direction, will I be able to uh, accomplish these goals in the time that I've thought or do I need to change my plans or change my goals and that is something that really helped me stay on track because I could keep an eye on what are the publications I'm going to get out of the particular projects, what are the skills that am I running, learning out of the particular projects and I could also think of okay if I complete until this stage I could apply for conferences and go and present my work there. So these are the kind of things you can only do if you have set some deadlines and goals for yourself and then work hard to achieve them. So that's it guys. These are my top six tips that should help you to stay upbeat, motivated, a good planner and sort of finish your PhD in the timelines that you and your family had thought about or are comfortable with. Unseen challenges and unfortunate events would always be there. So don't be disheartened if you're getting delayed by a few months because especially in this time when COVID has derailed things in life like anything. Keep yourself motivated and if there are any problems that you're facing, put them down in the comments section and I'll try to help you as much as I can. Stay safe guys. Please remember COVID has not gone away. We are all getting vaccinated but we need to continue to take our precautions. Stay healthy, eat well and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.